In this video I'll do one example of finding points of inflection and discussing concavity with a trigonometric function. Now trig functions in general are periodic and they're most, mostly smooth curves uh, within their domains and so you're going to have lots of changes in concavity and oftentimes lots of points of inflection with trig functions. So they can be a little bit more complex, they can be a little bit annoying and tedious. Uh, we'll do one example here and then uh, I would only expect you to know a simple, how to do simple examples of these types of problems. So let's get started. Number 31. We have f of x is equal to sine of x over 2 and we're on the interval, closed interval this time, from 0 to 4 pi. The first derivative then would be cosine. It's a function composition. Take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside, and we're done. And so that would be 1 half cosine of x over 2. The second derivative then would be 1 half. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. We leave the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. When we simplify, we end up with negative 1 fourth sine of x over 2. And so that is our first, that is our second derivative there. Now we want to set that equal to 0, negative 1 fourth sine of x over 2 is going to be 0 whenever sine of x over 2 is 0. And sine is 0 at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. So we need x over 2 to be 0 or x over 2 to be pi or x over 2 to be 2 pi, or x over 2 to be 3 pi, and we'll see. We'll try also x over 2 to be 4 pi. All right, so if x over 2 is 0, then x equals 0. That'll be our first potential point of inflection. The second, x over 2 is pi when x is 2 pi that works as well. The third when x is 4 pi and the fourth and the fifth will happen when x is 6 pi or x is 8 pi but the latter two are outside of our interval of concern here. So we have three potential points of inflection and we're going to make a number line. Now, since we're on the closed interval from 0 to 4 pi, we can have that start and end that way, and we have 2 pi in the middle. Now, our second derivative is sine, so we want a good value for sine of x over 2. Pi over 6 is great, so we would need x to be pi over 3, then divided by 2, would give us pi over 6. So pi over 3 is our x value to test. F prime prime of x. And in that case, sine would be 1 half times negative 1 fourth would be negative. And from 2 pi to 4 pi, we could just use, that would be 6 pi over 3 would be 2 pi, 7 pi over 3. And that's 7 pi over 3 divided by 2 would be 7 pi over 6. And there, sine is negative 1 half. Negative times negative is going to give us positive there. So we have x equals 2 pi is a point of inflection. And f of x is concave up 
from 2 pi to 4 pi f of x is concave down from 0 to 2 pi. And we'll bring up the graphing calculator and see how we did with this. So I have the function there, sine of x over 2. My window is set from 0 to 4 pi. Remember that you can actually just type in 0 to 4 pi in uh, steps of pi. And I go from negative 2 to positive 2. When I graph that, I get just what we expected. The function is concave up, rather concave down from 0 to 2 pi, concave up after that, and at 2 pi there's a point of inflection, so I'll put a copy of this on the workspace. And label it up. This is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi here. And you can see very clearly at 2 pi, the function changes from being concave down to being concave up, and that's what we were trying to demonstrate. So this is a fairly simple example. Still, it has its complications. It's, it's a little tedious and a little annoying, but uh, we should be able to do something like this.